time for everyone to fall in love with the new inside linebackers. A reminder, only one of them might be playing. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into hockey and or baseball, I also offer Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates where you found this. Mika Fitzpatrick had some interesting stuff to say yesterday in Latrobe following practice. Most of it related to the three safety set that, believe you me, this defense is going to employ. I've been telling you this for weeks now, and I've also been telling you that I'm not guessing at it. I've been told this. It's not being viewed as a gimmick. It's not being viewed as a specific matchup type arrangement where you just use it against a specific opponent that presents certain challenges. No, no, this it's not the base defense, but it's going to be a sub package within the defense as a whole and a legitimate one. They did not add Keanu Neal for nothing. Neal is that guy. Just as DeMonte Casey was the choice of management ahead of Terrell Edmonds because they felt he'd fit this scheme better. That with Casey and Neal, the third safety, certainly not on the depth chart or in your hearts, becomes Minka. And the reason that I categorize him as third here is because the other two would have specific assignments, specific roles. And Minka, bloodhound that he is, gets to just sniff footballs out of midair. A complete wild card. Everything that you want an elite ball hawk to be. Here's a little of what Minka had to say about the arrangement. It it allows all of us to do whatever we want to do, honestly. Um, if, if Key wants to blitz, then I can come down in coverage. If, if Key wants you know, you know, stay in coverage, then I can go you know, work in the box and do different things in the box or be in the post. So it allows us to, uh, it allows us not to be static and, and uh, offense is not uh, be able to predict you know, what we're in. Now he'd proceed to single out Neil, as I just did a moment ago, as pivotal within this because Neil is the guy who's up front He's a pseudo linebacker. He's a guy that takes a lot of pride in being effective in the box, including against the run when needed. That's something he told me about back in OTAs. And with his chin high, he sees himself as that type of safety. There are some that aren't all that wild about it. They'd rather not be up there because they're coverage guys and they don't need to be taking down 260-pound running backs and so forth. Well, Neil is. Neil loves it, lives for it. And that's going to be the role that he plays. And when he does, the individual coming off the field, you can put a real solid bet on this, is going to be one of those inside linebackers. So if you have... A setting where either the three safety formation becomes very popular internally, or you do have a matchup where you would just want to use that a lot, inside linebackers might not matter much at all. It might only be Quan Alexander out there. Or if it's all coverage, if that's your thing, you just want to go nutso on coverage. You can alternate those guys. You can have Cole Holcomb out there. Maybe not a Landon Roberts. He's not really known as a coverage inside linebacker. But the point is, there's so much flexibility with this defense. Way more, I think, than most people seem to realize. And there's another component to this as well. These individuals, all three of these safeties, but especially Neil, are physical. They will hit you. Now, they won't hit you old school Ryan Clark style, Mike Mitchell style, because the rules have changed since then. Can't just be going at people's heads or using your own head, as Alexander found out the other night in Tampa, to deliver a hit. But, but, you can be physical. And these guys are going to bring that as well. And I don't want to be making any kind of habit of 
kicking TE on his way out the door. Uh, I think you guys know how I feel about him as a person and as a player, but he wasn't that physical guy. He wasn't, for the most part, delivering punishing hits. The Steelers really weren't doing that in general very much as a secondary. All of their physicality occurred up front or, and this is important too, it occurred with Minka. Remember that game in Cincinnati and who was hitting harder than anybody else. Minka hates the Bengals. Does so very little to hide it. And it's such an admirable trait in and of itself. But you don't want Minka being the one to throw his shoulder into people all day long, 17 times a year. That makes no sense. You want Minka being that bloodhound in the back. And by finding these other guys and by assimilating this three safety set, even if it comes at the expense of some more conventional formations or an inside linebacker or a nickel corner, dime corner, whatever it is, you're going to have a bigger, tougher defense out there in front of number 39. That matters a lot. When we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shot is brought to you by our good friends at Mike's Beer Bar. They're located on Federal Street, directly across from PNC Park. Mike has more than 500 beers on tap, including from more than 50 local breweries. Stop in and say hello. Tell Mike we sent you. Mike's Beer Bar. Today's J1Q comes from Frank who asks, I really don't like the NFL rules about helmets. It's okay for a running back to lower his head, but what's the difference between that and a defensive player doing it? That's why they wear helmets in the first place. I I see the biggest problem as being how loose their helmets are on and how they fly off from the slightest contact. Players are ruining the game. Because not wearing the mouthpiece in the helmet is so loose that it just comes popping off. Come on, man. This needs to be brought up and dealt with. Personally, I'm getting sick of some of these personal (laughs) fouls. BS. Oh, man. Can I just end the episode here? Can I just end the episode with a salute to Frank and whichever cloud he was watching go over his head as he yelled all this out? (laughs) Because if it was up to Frank and men were men again, everybody would be wearing those leather helmets and crashing into each other and just disappearing, disappearing without a trace. Because everyone thinks, after the fact, that nobody ever got hurt playing football back in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and even into the 70s. They bent steel with their bare hands. They ate nails for breakfast. They bench-pressed locomotives. And by God, if anyone ever hit them on the football field, on their head, they felt nothing. I I could do this to you all day, Frank. I'm not going to. Player safety matters. Hitting people with your head increases the likelihood of a serious injury. Concussions are not just about contact. In fact, more often than not, they aren't about contact at all. They're about motion. They're about the brain moving inside the skull to somewhere it's not supposed to be. And even if that movement is just momentary, something happens to unsettle the brain from, again, where it's supposed to be. That is a concussion. It's not a bruise. It's not an ouchie. It's the brain moving somewhere it's not supposed to be. That's the third time I'm saying this now. I'm hoping it resonates. There are ways to play football, to play it physically, to play it with a snarl, and to do it safely. There are safe ways to tackle people. There are safe ways to be tackled. And if you're Quan Alexander, in that setting, where the running back from Tampa Bay is coming at you, and you want to make very sure, not only that he's down, 
but that he gets the message that he's going to get punished in that game, you have a hundred different ways of doing it within the rules. You know how I know that? Because on the previous series, Quan Alexander did that himself. He had a running back lined up in the backfield. A little bit of a late blitz came around, sneaked around somebody to the right, found a gaping hole, saw just that running back, went right at him, put the shoulder into the chest, knocked him backward with greater force, I should add, than the hit that was penalized. It was a more impressive bit of contact. No flag. What was wrong with that one, Frank? Did you like that one? Did you care if they were wearing leather helmets or no helmets at all and spitting fire and whatever else you have in your head about old-time football? I'm in favor of player safety. There, there it is. There's the boldest stance I'll take. All year long. I do appreciate the question, Frank. I do appreciate you listening to the show. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. One more practice in Latrobe today, and then there's a football game at Akersher Stadium Saturday night, or as Frank likes to call it, Pitt Stadium. Or or Forbes Field or some random sandlot underneath the Bloomfield Bridge. Let's do it again tomorrow, guys.